Hello everybody, my name's Tom. I'm the Senior Technician at Clean Eye Corporation. Today we're going to rebuild the head on a 310 cat pump. It's a fairly simple operation. You need a seal case removal tool, 1516 socket, half inch ratchet or breaker bar, screwdriver, needle nose pliers, crescent wrench, and a 516 Allen wrench. Okay, you start out that by taking the head off of the uh, body itself. It takes a 516 Allen wrench. Now they're fairly snug, so it takes a little bit to get them out. So you're going to remove those bolts completely. Once those are removed, uh, what I do to make it easier for me is I actually take a crescent wrench and I stick it on the crank and I'll turn the crank. When I do, it separates the head from the body. Then just take a screwdriver put it down in and slowly and carefully just pry it out. Once you get it out to a certain point, hold on to the head and pull. Okay, now before we get into replacing the head or doing the head, when you receive a, a packing kit for the 310 pump, there are three small O-rings that's in it. They go to these three bolts on the top of this. So it's, uh, what I would do is I would take these bolts out, check the O-rings in them and make sure that they're in good shape before I go any farther. That way it's done and it's out of the way and the rear assembly is no longer an issue into this. The O-rings are supplied in the kit, so my advice is to change them. So every time that you change seals, you're also gonna change the O-rings that are on, these, on, the, on the three stems. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this in a vise or someplace that'll hold it in place. We're gonna replace the seals first. A seal case removal tool is what you're going to use for this and I actually put it on a breaker bar because it makes it easier. The part number on this is a PU3003004. Okay, place it in the seal cases after we remove the low pressure seals. Now with those I do the same thing. I just take a screwdriver, put it against the seal and pop. Take the seal case removal tool, put it in, and loosen them up. Remove the seal cases. You have to be kind of careful with these. These are actually made out of brass. And if you try to do it without using the, uh, the seal case tool, or you're not careful with it, you'll actually flare the ends on these things and they will not sit back down inside the head. They will not seat and they will not seat the seal. So you have to be very careful with these because like I said, they are made out of brass and you'll round these edges off in here. As soon as you do, this is no good anymore. All right, that's done. Now, if you look down inside of the head, you're gonna find the high pressure seals. Same thing, put a screwdriver in, Grab a hold of the side of the seal and just pop. Now I, re I removed all the seals at one time, that way they're all out. I'm not worried about putting old seals back in that I took out. So they are gone. There's two types of seals inside of the seal, inside the seal kit. One of them is a high pressure seal, one is a low pressure seal. The easiest way if you're getting a kit to determine which one is which, the low pressure seals will come inside a packet. The high pressure seals will be loose. Another way to tell is if you look on the top of a high pressure seal, you'll see a metal ring around the outside of it. That makes it high pressure. On the low pressure seals, you're actually going to see the spring on the inside of the seal, which is right in here. Okay, we have our seals laid out now. So we're going to take a high pressure seal, stick it down in, line it up. It actually will start a little bit with your fingers, but what I do is I take a 516 socket and push it down in the rest of the way. That way you make sure that it seats all the way around 
because you're pushing down on the whole seal instead of just on the corner of it. I do the same thing with all of them. Now that takes care of the high pressure seals. Now, on the seal case, there's an O-ring. You actually receive those with the kit too. So they're in the kit, change them. The easiest way to take them off, a pocket knife, razor knife, screwdriver, anything, down underneath the seal, and just cut. Now you can actually peel this off just by putting a screwdriver underneath and peeling it. I cut mine when I take them off, that way I'm not making, taking a chance of putting an old seal back in instead of the new seal one, uh, instead of the new seal. But you know, which, whichever makes you happy. I change them every time that I put a seal kit in because like I said, they are already supplied, they're there, so there's no reason not to put them in. They come in a little separate bag, there's three of them. It's the only three large O-rings in the set. Put them on, squeeze them down, Put them on, put them in the, in the groove, back inside the pump. Okay, take your tool, put them on, and just snug them down. Now, you don't have to kill these things, you just snug them down. The easiest way to tell is whether they're in place or not is if you take a look at the grooves that are in the seal case, they'll sit flush with the head. So that's done you're going to install the low pressure seals okay the low pressure seals you're always going to put the spring away from you so if you look at this thing it has a flat top on it the other side has it grooving with the spring in it so the spring will always go away from you or towards the fluid so they're going to be pushed down into Now, in a perfect world, you're supposed to keep these out of dirt, try to keep them clean where you're putting in and stuff, but you know, in the real world, you're in your car wash, you're in your equipment room, you're going to try to, you know, you're, you're going to get them dirty, but you try to keep them as clean as possible. Take the socket again, push them down in so that they seat. And they're going to be seated when they're down below the notches that are inside the same case. We just installed a seal kit or a seal kit inside of a 310 cat pump. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check valves. So you're gonna stand this thing straight up inside the vise or back on your pump, whichever one is easier for you. You have to have some way that it's secured. Take a 15-16 socket. Now I've had guys using crescent wrenches and adjustables and everything and don't. Get a socket or get a wrench that actually fits the nut because if you don't you're going to strip it. Now these are on snug too so once you get in all it takes is just a little tap. Okay, pair of needle nose pliers. Now there's a little tab that sticks up on the top of the valve. The suggestion is to grab a hold of that tab and pull up on that tab. I don't do that because if you smash the tab then it will not back, go back inside the hole that's in the top of the valve cap. Go around the outside of the seal casing, 
twist and pull. Okay. Valve seat, valve, spring, and holder. If you're having vibration in your pump, 99% of the time it's going to be these. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that it's clean between the valve and the valve seat. The easiest way to find out whether this thing is sealed or it's not sealed is suck on it. If you've sucked no air through it, the valve's in good shape. Check the O-ring, the backup ring that's on the valve seat. If they're in good shape, they go back in again. It's fairly simple. It's fairly easy to do. When you buy a valve kit for these, it actually comes with three valves on it and the O-rings for the caps. Now these valves, there's nothing wrong with these valves, so I'm not going to replace them in this pump. All three in the same way. You know those pliers in? Pick up and turn at the same time. Inspect them for dirt. These valves are all in good shape. Okay, after you've inspected again, make sure you do for washout, you're going to replace the valves back inside the head. Now they will go down in and they will start. You just pick them up, put them in place, and push them down with your thumb or finger or a screwdriver, whatever you feel like using. But they don't go back in that hard. Once you've done that, you just screw the top back on. Yeah. Same thing with the O-rings that are on this thing. When you buy a valve kit, the O-rings come with the valve kit for the caps. Replace them. Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent, you've already got them, you've already paid for them, put them on. Okay. Do not kill these bolts when you put them back in. That's a, it, it's a misconception that these things have to be, you know, Superman tight. They don't. They just have to be tight. So, you know, don't get, well, once you get them on there, don't wrench them down tight. It's not going to make any difference whether you wrench them tight or you just snug them up tight. So, you know, anybody that's ever rebuilt a car or ever put valve cover gaskets on ahead at six foot pounds per square inch, that's exactly what you're doing with this. You know, all of us old folks did it by feel. Like I said, you don't kill these things when you put them on because if you do, you're going to have to fight them to get them back off. All right, you have the same thing now. We just did the discharge valves. The inlet valves are the same setup. They're on the front. So these are inlet, these are discharge. They change the same way, you check them the same way, you inspect the head the same way. After you're done with that, it's just a matter of putting it back on the head. Now what I'd like to do is I like to put so that I've got the two outside ceramics out. It gives you more of a guide to put it together with. Get the head started and push, and they push on hard. Once you have it in, you're gonna be a little ways from being tight. Just insult your bolts and tighten it up the rest of the way with the bolts. And when you tighten the head back on, the, on a pump, you do not tighten one side straight down. Alternate between sides. The reason you're doing this is you do not want to pull one side of the head down and have the other side a quarter inch out because then you're either going to pinch the seals on it and ruin them, or you're going to crack a ceramic and end up taking it back apart again. So as you do it, Gonna snug this one down a little bit and then go to the other side and snug it down a little bit. Okay, we just rebuilt the head on the 310 CAD pump. Now the next thing you're gonna do is if you're changing the seals or changing whatever, you need to change the oil. It's just a matter of taking the drain plug out, draining all the oil out of it, 18 ounces of cat oil, back in it again, and you're ready to run. But you know, if you're changing the low pressure seals, or you're changing the seals in this thing, you should change the oil too because it's a good possibility you had some kind of fluid go back inside the oil. So when you change the seals, change the oil. That's pretty much the end of it.